Yeah, the Tim and James Show. Yeah, the Tim and James Show. Yeah, the Tim and James Show. Don't fuck with me. Yeah. Yeah. The Timmy James Show. The Timmy James Show. You hear lots of crazy things. Hey guys, what's up? It's the Timmy James Show. I'm your host, Timmy James. Now, before we start with the show, I just want to say that um, even though a few episodes ago when I talked about the uh, Kathy Griffin Donald Trump thing, that I felt Donald Trump's pain, like not his pain, but his son's pain. Um, and saying, oh, you shouldn't say that about the president. Yeah, that's true. Now, I saw this other, saw this article just recently. My friend posted it on Facebook. And, and this link is going straight up, straight to Facebook after I upload this. Um, after I upload this, so I'll tag you in the. You know who you are, but I'll I'll tag you in the post anyway. Um. Yeah, so you'll hear what I think about the Donald Trump um, school bully thing. Uh, I'll just read the article. I'll just get it. Haven't got my iPad today because my iPad has, um, it's, yeah, my iPad's flat and I haven't got a charger. Alright, now here's the article. And the title of the article, which I find very stupid, but clever, and I'm reading it on BuzzFeed. The title of the article is "The Kids uh, is the Kids are Alt Right." Alt Right. Hmm. Where have you got? Where have we heard that? saying before, we've heard alt right or whatever, or alt right, but we've heard it talk about, heard that sentence mentioned with another person who is quite similar to Trump, and people compare him to Trump all the time, wait a minute, Hitler, yeah that's it, Hitler, they are quoting Hitler, I just want to say that, alright, Kids are quoting Trump, the bully that <laughs> classmates and teachers. Yeah, all right. Kids are quoting Trump, the bully their classmates and teachers don't know what to do about it. All right. B- B- BuzzFeed News has received more than 50 reports of school bullying since the election. And it's found that kids nationwide are using Trump's words to taunt their classmates. If the president can say that those things, why can't we? 
So this is why America is fucked. Now, I know I've got friends in America who are probably listening to this podcast. I'm not saying you're fucked. I'm saying your country's fucked. There's a big difference. On Trump's campaign and election added an alarming twist to school bullying with white students using the president's word and slogans to to bully Latino, Middle Eastern, black, Asian and Jewish classmates. Okay, now that's taken it a bit too far. Trump's turned turned the kids racist. Really? It's fucking bullshit. Like when you got Obama as the president, like you didn't have all the kids dressing up in blackface going, I want to be like him. Because they would have gotten a lot more trouble for that. But how are they not getting in trouble for this? In in the first comprehensive review of of post election bullying, BuzzFeed News has confirmed more than fifty incidents across twenty six states in which a K twelve student invoked Trump's name or message in an apparent effort to harass a classmate during the past school year. I don't know what that K-12 bullshit is, but anyway. In the parking lot of a high school in Shakopee, Shakopee, Minnesota, or Shakopee, Minnesota, but I can't pronounce it, I don't care, I don't live there. (laughs) Boys in Donald Trump shirts gathered around a black teenage girl and sang a portion of the Star Spangled Banner, replacing the closing line with "And the home of the slaves. What the fuck? On a playground at an elementary school in Albuquerque, New Mexico, third graders surrounded a boy chanted Trump Enchanted Trump, Trump, Trump. Now, that's fucking bullshit. Now, I'm not even fucking recording. Oh, yeah, I am. I am recording. Okay, that's good. (laughs) It's just I didn't see the thing on there. But yeah, I'm recording, so that's good. Because I'm doing all this on the phone. Because my iPad's flat and I don't, I currently don't have a charger for it. Hmm. Alright. Here's the next part of that article. On a school bus in San Antonio, Texas, now it's starting to make sense. A white eighth grader said to a Filipino classmate, and I'm gonna do the accent, gonna do the Texan accent, no, no worries, I'll do it. You are going to be deported. In a classroom in Bree, California. Alright, no, that was... That was all it was, but anyway. In a classroom in Bray, California, a white eighth grader told a black classmate, Now that Trump won, you're going to have to go back to Africa, where you belong. What the fuck?! In the hallway of a high school in San Mateo County, California, a white student told two biracial girls to go back home to whatever country you're from. First of all, they're biracial. Two races at the same time. So, like, black and Asian at the same time, like, yeah. 
black and Asian at the same time, so like Blasian. Saying go back wherever you came from. That's fucking bullshit. Alright. Whatever country you're from. They're obvious. In Louisville, Kentucky. Here we go, more racist parts of America. A third grade chased a Latina girl around the classroom shouting, build the wall in a stadium parking lot in Jacksonville, Florida. What the fuck? Shame, build the wall. In a stadium parking lot in Jacksonville, Florida, after a high school football game, white students chanted at black students from from the opposing school. Donald Trump, Donald Trump, Donald Trump. What the fuck? Today's high schoolers will be eligible eligible to vote in 2020. And today's fifth graders will be eligible to vote in 2024. Haha, uh -huh, flash reference. Well, they're both flash references, but anyway. Yeah, that's fucked. Um... The first school year of the Donald Trump presidency left educators struggling to na navigate a climate where misogyny, religious intolerance, name-calling, and racial exclusion have become part of a mainstream political speech. These budding political beliefs among some students carry con consequences carry consequences beyond the schoolyard T today's high school will be eligible to vote in yeah that's what I just wrote but even if the wave of Trump related bullying doesn't reflect some widespread political awakening among young people it indicates a more troubling reality. The extent to which racial, racial and religious intolerance has shaped how our kids talk, joke, and bully. And that's the end of the article. Oh no, there's more. Fuck! I don't need to check if I'm still recording. Yeah, I'm still recording. Okay, that's good. It's unacceptable and reflects a wider climate of hate that we're seeing. Of hate that we're seeing. Antonio Lampes, no, Antonio Lopez. I'm sorry, I'm just a bit stoned at the moment. An assistant school superintendent. Ooh. Portland, Oregon told BuzzFeed News Lopez in March announced a plan to personally track racist bullying in his district, citing the importance of snubbing out hateful speech as early as possible. Good on you, Antonio. It's probably not helping you with a name like Antonio Lamp. Antonio Lopez, you'll have, have people, yeah, you're just painting a target on yourself, well you're not, your parents are when they named you that, but they didn't know, they can't see the future. Lopez said the hate incidents in his district were on his mind when he heard that was his premises Jeremy Joseph jo uh, Jeremy Joseph Christian had stabbed three people two of them fatally on a Portland train which meant he killed them after they intervened to stop his racist rant oh yeah after they intervened to stop their racist rant against two teenage girls, one of them a Muslim wearing a headscarf. Alright. 
<sighs> See, he obviously wasn't wearing his... Because if he's a white supremacist, he obviously wasn't wearing his clan clothes. Like the white hood and everything, so he was obviously in plain clothes. So, like, the joke that I was just meant to make wouldn't work. Or the statement, rather. Like, if you see a clan member on a train, fucking run, don't argue. While there are no quantitative... While there are no quantitative studies explaining the election's impact on school bullying, BuzzFeed News conducted a, fir a first large-scale nationwide analysis of bullying incidents linked to Trump, reviewing hundreds of reports submitted to a documenting hate project, a database of Tips about hate crimes and bias in the incidents set up by ProPublica and shared with other news organisations. Uh, this article better. Oh, still got fucking plenty to go. Am I still recording? Oh, I'm still recording. Good. Okay, just because I haven't really got the time. I wish I had the fucking widget, which it showed me. Um, BuzzFeed News received every alleged inf incident from October to late May. Hmm. You want to know something funny? When I was in hospital last year, in the Royal Melbourne Hospital, getting my all stones removed, the night before the operation, or the day before, rather, um, I had went out because I was in hospital for ages. Like, I was in hospital for a total of 11 days, and that's at three separate hospitals. Um, but we'll talk about that another time. So I was there, and it was... It was the... It was when they were sh It was when the second presidential debate happened. If you guys remember correctly, right before the presidential debate, is when the whole gra Trump grab him by the pussy thing started, like when that whole audio tape got released, because I remember I was in hospital that day, and I heard the heard the tape, like the audio, and then and then later, like like I came back from shopping with Dad in Melbourne. And then Dad's like, "Want to watch the presidential debate?" And I'm like, "No, not really. I'd rather have my operation early if you're going to do that." <laughs> but yeah, he put it on, and then um, like all hell broke loose, and it was funny because they kept mentioning that. Um, I kept mentioning the thing, the, the grab them by the pussy thing. It's crazy. So yeah, anyway, from early October to late May, the report spanned 149 schools. Of those. BuzzFeed News was able to follow up on cases through interviews and fuck, I'm going to need a smoke. I 
حرس مرتبه Fuckers, tobacco on my bed. Uh, don't mind me, guys. Look for my smoke. Probably think, I'm why don't you pause the fucking recording? Well, I can't because I'm in the middle of reading the article. So I'll have to go back and it'll just be too fucking difficult. Anyway. I know I'm crazy. That's probably why I got, I've got listeners. Because I've noticed I've got listeners. And whoever you listeners are, I just want you guys to know you guys are legends. Alright. I know, this is fucking boring. We're going on a little walk. I just unplugged the charger, unplugged the phone, don't worry. Am I still recording? Yes, I'm still recording. Hello? Hooga haga, hooga haga, hooga haga, hooga haga. Alright, still recording. Just looking for my smoke. I had a smoke there. Well, nobody knows where it is. Do you know where it is? This me fucking smoke. Uh, what was thinking? Yeah, I'll roll one. I've got tobacco there, I'll roll one. I got the rolling machine there, got the filters there. Probably thinking, why do you need a fucking rolling machine? Oh, it's because I got cerebral palsy and I can't roll on by myself. <sighs> okay. Alright, uh, it's just so bullshit if you ask me. But I'll keep reading it. <laughs> Buzzfeed News was able to follow up on 54 cases through interviews, public statements from school officials and local news reports. Buzzfeed has not heard back from the people who who filed the other 95 tips. Ooh. That's very interesting. Very interesting. Like, I'm fucking surprised. Like, you'd wanna, you wanna get it out there unless you've been threatened by Trump himself. Or the Secret Service. Cause it'd be weird just a president walking up to you going, you better not report to BuzzFeed. <laughs> that would be fucking hilarious. If he came up to me and said that, would be like, Here's your fucking wall going? Can't get it up, can you? <laughs> Can't get it up. Almost done, guys. Alright. Almost there. I've rolled the smoke, now I've got a lot of Where's my lighter? There we go. That's better. All right. Fifty-four 
people of care. Yep, I uh, read that. For teachers and principal, the first school year of the Trump pre presidency brought a new test. Alright. How much time we got left? This is only supposed to be recording for 25 No, 45 minutes. Oh, I've only been recording for 25 minutes, okay. Alright. Here's what a um a principal in Hood River no, a principal in Oregon actually know someone from Oregon yeah. um this is my twenty first year in education you mean teaching education. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen a situation like this. I've never seen a situation like this before, said Brent Emmons, principal of Hood River Middle School in Oregon. I'd say Portland, Oregon, but anyway. It's a, de it's a delicate tightrope to walk. It's not my role role to tell people how to think about political policies, but it's my role to make sure every kid feels safe at the school. Yeah, that is right. But he's got his head screwed on. At a time at a time of thick political and racial tensions and of heightened worries among people of colour which is what is a, a teacher to say when a student asks why can the president say, say it but I can't huh. there's a graph here but I won't bother reading it um, teachers like everybody else in the United States, realise at some point in 2016 that this election was very different. Over her 10 years as a middle, <coughs> as a middle school English teacher in Spokane Valley, Washington, also know someone from there. It's actually the same person. They moved a lot, <laughs> and I'm not kidding. I'm actually serious. Um. Amanda Mead liked to shift her curriculum based on current events. She assigned readings from civil, the civil rights era when protests roiled Ferguson in 2014, 2012 and 2008. Her classroom discussions often discussed Turn to presidential the presidential election. Yeah. We talked about Bush, Obama, McCain, etc. And the kids would not, and the kid w the kids would just nod their heads. Mead said, but as the campaign heated up last year, I started to notice a pretty significant change amongst my kids. They would say things that I never heard kids in my school district say. Far more vitriolic or vitriolic or whatever. I, I can't pronounce that word. I've never heard that word. Um, here's where it gets interesting. She caught a group of white students following a Latino student in a hallway, taunting him with the chance of the walls coming and Trump, Trump, Trump. She overheard kids 
repeating insults that Trump has aimed at Hillary Clinton. Hmm. What, calling him crooked Hillary? For the kids, there was no escaping Trump. His speeches, pl- his speeches played on television nearly every night. Every adult seemed to be talking about him. At dinner tables, on social media, he was the central figure of the cultural mo- moment. And he talked like a playground bully. That is true. It's a daily occurrence. Uh, Here's a quote. As the campaign heated up last year, I started to notice a significant change among my kids. I already read that bit. Yeah. But that's just a highlighter quote. It's a daily occurrence that they hear this language, so Dorothy Espelich, Espelage, or whatever. So you have weird names in America. What? Why can't you just call it Dorothy Dinosaur, for fuck's sake? <laughs> uh, still got time left, just checking, because I'm only supposed to be recording for 45 minutes. That's my limit. Um, it's a daily, alright, read that, <laughs> an education professor, a psychology professor, that's Dorothy S. Belige or whatever, at University of Florida, ooh, always wanted to go to Florida, who has researched school bullying. They're just parrying back what they hear from parents, from Trump, from raucous crowds on televised campaign rallies. Emmons, the middle school principal in Oregon, didn't realise how much how much kids had latched on the Trump's message until dozens of his students chanted Build that wall during a Halloween assembly after two teachers performing a skit. Performing in a skit entered the stage wearing masks of Trump and Clinton. See, I hate it when teachers try to get political. It's just nuts. A third of the school students are Latino. No, that's not good. That was the first time that I knew it was going on. No, that I knew it was going to be a problem at my school. Emmons said, yeah, Emmons said, any of our students felt unsafe and disrespected. These words are hateful and scary for them. Well then, I'm just reading it in my own words. When Emmons talked to some of the kids who had chanted, he he said he found out that some students had no idea what it meant. They were simply joining in with the mob. It's middle school. It's what you do because you're you're right next to them. Emmons said, I really don't believe that 99% of the kids who were chanting it have any malice or hate in their hearts. That's true. I can back that up because I've had that happen to me. And then I was like, ask the kids, why are you saying this shit? Oh, because he's saying it, so I thought I'd say it. Just be cool. I actually had someone say that to me. Yeah, so I'm an expert on this shit. Kids, like the president, tend to enjoy a good troll. That is true. I've also had my fair share of trolling. Recalling an incident he witnessed 
in which some white students harass minority students with the usual lines about wars and deportation. Ellen Henderson, a high school sophomore in Atlanta, said maybe a few of them truly were passionate about those beliefs, but the others seemed to just be doing it to incite a response to see what will happen. To Emmons and other educators' activities and discussions that once seemed innocently enriching, suddenly become fraught. Teachers grappled with how to talk to students about the election, or whether to talk about it at all. I don't really reckon you sh they should even be talking about it. That's my opinion. Um, whether to talk about it at all. One fifth grade teacher in North Carolina who requested anonymity, so she wanted to be anonymous, Says here, her name is Carol. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> She's anonymous, and I respect that. Okay, so Miss Anonymous said her school told teachers to avoid discussion, avoid discussion about the candidates, and focus on the political process when talking about the election. I don't think. Anyone has known how to handle it or approach it, the teacher said. Good morning, Miss Anonymous. No, that would be funny. <laughs> A week before the election, students in high school in Florine, Louisiana. Down in Louisiana, where the alligators grow something. Sorry. I just love that song. You guys know I do. There's an episode where I sing the song. Held a mock election in a lunchroom. Nearly all of the 200 student, 200 or so students voted for Trump. When the vote count was read out, some students began asking who were voting for who had voted for Clinton? One boy, a Latino 10th grader, raised his hand. Go back home, somebody shouted. Do you have your working papers? Someone else said. They build a wall. Champ broke out. A build a wall champ broke out. So, like, again, they were talking about the fucking wall. Oh, this fucking article goes on and on and on. Alright, I'm going to stop it from here. And just talk about the Jim Jeffries show. For now. Oh, I've only got a few minutes left, so I'm just going to say goodbye now. And hopefully I will have a happy podcast for you. Alright, see you guys. The Tim and Jay Show The Tim and Jay Show The Tim and Jay Show Yeah 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 The Tim and Jay Show Don't fuck with me. Yeah. 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 Timmy James show. Yeah. Timmy James show. You hear lots of crazy things.